and uh, and we are recording this very good so we will continue there um and you know uh, why don't we uh, i've got just a couple of introductory remarks we're going to keep this i think about 30 to 40 minutes um and uh and why don't we as we always uh, try to do and remember to do to start with a word of prayer uh since we're all together and is there anybody that wants to step in and do that on this important Juneteenth celebration? Okay, I will. Wonderful, Rhonda, thank you very much. Okay, let us pray. Gracious Father, we come right now thanking you for this another day. Lord, we just thank you for this important time of the year, a time that have now become a holiday, Juneteenth. Lord, we thank you for just bringing us all together and the importance and just sharing how we feel and just sharing the importance and just coming together as one. We ask you, Lord, that you continue to just keep us and just help us to love one another day by day. Father God, remember our organization, remember our leaders. Lord, continue to just move us forth in your name. Amen. 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 Rhonda, thank you. And where are you preaching Sunday? <laughs> I want to be there. Thank you. Thank you for starting us off with a prayer. Um, I, I do want to welcome everybody to our uh, Juneteenth Remembrance, a celebration that, you know, sadly, when I was growing up, I never heard about. Um, you know, Juneteenth, also known as Freedom Day and uh, Jubilee Day, Liberation Day, is a day in which we remember and celebrate the emancipation of enslaved people, especially the last um, uh, enslaved people in the United States. Um, however, Juneteenth is also a way of recognizing the continued fight for equal rights for all people, especially uh, African Americans. Um, this is the first year that we've recognized Juneteenth as an organization. Uh, I believe this is especially important um, as we understand the history of oppression that, that Black Americans have faced and continue to face though it looks a little different today, but it's still there. That history of oppression has been integrated in a lot of aspects of our society and in the systems uh, that we all work in. Uh, it affects our staff and the individuals we serve. And it's important for us as an organization to understand and fight for justice. Uh, and it's so important that our board just yesterday, and I, it's amazing how all these stars lined up at one time, but just yesterday uh, afternoon, our board, uh, the Board of Trustees of Lutheran Services Carolinas, approved uh, the team's recommendation to add a justice value to our values for Lutheran Services. And you'll be seeing a lot about that. Uh, we've already posted uh, about it on social media, and you'll be seeing a lot more about it very soon. I think it's also really important that they did that on the edit. It, it was just an accident, or maybe it wasn't an accident, that it happened on the anniversary of the Emanuel Nine uh, uh, massacre, uh, and also just two days before Juneteenth, uh, and and uh, and just a day before we were going to have our Juneteenth celebration. I I wish we were smart enough to have planned it that way. We weren't. Uh, maybe somebody else is planning for us, um, but it, it's great that it worked out uh, so well. You know, Nicole Marsh uh, from, uh, from Trinity Oaks Health and Retirement called a few weeks ago as they were planning a campus Juneteenth event. And that'll teach her. Um, Nicole, are you on here? Do I see you on? I know you're on here somewhere. Um, um, but that'll teach her because that got her volunteered uh, to help put this together for the entire organization. And so thanks to Nicole and to Sarah Quirk and to Aaron, a uh, kid that works with us, and Rhonda, Leek, and others for putting this little celebration together for us this afternoon. And I hope you like the program we've put together. Uh, and late breaking news, and of course, uh, Rhonda uh, broke it, uh, is that, you know, I, I had written down here that the U.S. Congress had just voted in a very rare partisan, uh, bipartisan effort uh, that included almost all of the Republicans and all the Democrats, uh, which is almost unheard of today, to make Juneteenth a national holiday. And that's all I had written. 
But now I can add that yesterday afternoon, President Biden signed it into law. So it's now, it's already official. It's already legal. So uh, it's just a, a great day all the way around. And I'm just glad that we're able to get together and celebrate together. And Rhonda, I'm going to turn it over to you for the for the program. Rhonda's going to MC for us, I understand. <laughs> okay, Miss Aaron. Okay, I'm going to show you guys a video that um, is an educational video about Juneteenth. So hold on a second, I'm going to share my screen. Juneteenth is a deeply emotional moment for enslaved people because for decades, for, for centuries, enslaved people prayed for, hoped for, fought for in the form of slave rebellions, running away, bought their freedom when they could. And if you read slave narratives, if you listen to spirituals from the era of slavery, you know that enslaved people longed for freedom. This was something that I had been hoped for, but many believe may never come. to give me forty dollars a month in bed. The lot of the boys say they ain't want it. They rather go free, you know. Being able to go wherever they want it, being able to wonder about. For enslaved people, it was an expression of their freedom. Well, Matt Porter was the one that, that long Miss Porter, one of our white folks in Navy, who's come along we all sat on the fence, and the colored children come along and asked her, did she want to go with them? And she said, yes, she might have run them horses. She went on with them. I never did see her in his ever no more. When I think about Juneteenth, I think about it in the context of Emancipation Day celebrations that began January 1, 1863. They took on a whole new meaning when slavery was formally abolished after 1865. You would have had African-American veterans who fought in the Civil War be prominent in these celebrations, dressed in their military garb, speeches from enslaved people, the most prominent black politicians singing of hymns, spirituals, discussions of, of registering to vote. Enslaved people celebrating in public their newfound freedom was an act of resistance. Because we have to remember slavery came to an end after a four years bloody, bloody civil war. Still the, the bloodiest conflict in American history. Many people in the South and in the nation who did not want to see slavery abolished, fought tooth and nail to block the 13th Amendment. The abolition of slavery created a huge humanitarian crisis in the South. Suddenly four million people have very little means to take care of themselves, to support themselves, and do so in a really, really hostile environment. So the military was necessary to make sure that enslaved people got the food, the medicine, the shelter that they needed in order to survive. They're also there to protect, to the extent that that was possible, free people from violence, from recriminations from slaveholders, from Confederates who still hadn't given up the fight. And I remember when the Yankees stuck here, and the Yankees stuck back on the corner of the and the first people, people know, we, we go to the ground team, and they take them hanging over the storm. That's the punishment they got. Next time you see, they come a whole troop of Yankees, all riding horses. Big guns hanging on. I said, Mama, where are they going? 
they're all going home now. When the last federal troops leave the South, it's a signal to Southerners. The federal government wasn't going to put its might into ensuring the civil rights of Black people would be observed. You have 20, 30 years later, Black people being lynched in public, and there isn't a, a federal anti-lynching law to protect them. In most communities in America, there's a history of lynching and racial violence, and very few communities have marked that, commemorated that. Every decade since the end of slavery, Black people have been more educated, accrued more wealth, more status in American society. Every decade since 1865. But there's been one constant, and that constant is the presence of random racist violence. I see in George Floyd's murder was a white police officer attempting to dominate and to subdue a black man who was not resisting, who could not resist. Even though slavery came to an end in 1865, the desire to master and dominate black bodies did not. And we have never dealt with that. These are the kinds of stark realities that are highlighted during Juneteenth. If black people's lives can be expunged through racist violence and no one is held accountable, how free are we? Are we free? Thank you, Ms. Aaron, for that video. Very appreciative. We will now hear from Ms. Aisha Sharp, our human resource representative. Um, she will share with us a favorite quote about Juneteenth. Ms. Aisha. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Um, I was first approached by Sarah uh, Quirk about um, sharing some information about Juneteenth. And um, embarrassingly enough, um, me growing up in the area that I grew up in and um, the county that I grew up in and um, the culture that I grew up in, I did not know a lot about Juneteenth. And I told Sarah, I said, Sarah, I would not be the right person uh, to be spearheading um, or, or taking uh, the front line of this event. And that really just rocked my boat. Um, I was a little embarrassed, to be completely honest. Um, and so after I got off that phone call with Sarah, um, I, I, I immediately did some digging but because I never wanted to be approached again by someone of any race, of any gender, who asked me about Juneteenth and me not feel like I had enough information to be vocal about it. So I was able to um, find two quotes that um, I wanted to share with you all today. And uh, one quote was by a female and one was by a male. Um, we are not ready to fight because we love fighting. We are ready to fight because we are worth fighting for. That quote was by Zoe Zamunzi. Every year we must remind successive generations that this event, Juneteenth, triggered a series of events that one by one defines the challenges 
and responsibilities of successive generations. That's why we need this holiday. And that was by Al Edwards. Thank you for allowing me this moment and this time to share these two quotes with you all. Happy Juneteenth. Thank you. You will now be entertained with some soft music and some reflections with some favorite quotes. Enjoy. You will now hear from Ed Foster, who will share something special on his heart about Juneteenth. Ed Foster is one of our case managers from the Charlotte region. Hey, everybody. Hope all is well. Um, yeah, when I, I had the opportunity to speak about Juneteenth, I said, why not? Maybe it'll be an opportunity to inspire someone somewhere. Who knows? But like everyone else is saying, I as well. Um, wasn't familiar with Juneteenth growing up. You know, my family, we, they're from the Deep South. They talked about MLK Day and civil rights, so on and so forth. But, you know, sitting at the kitchen table, we, we never talked about uh, Juneteenth. Um, and maybe we did, and maybe I just didn't hear it. I don't know, but I didn't get it. So um, I had an opportunity to educate myself and um, realize that, hey, I mean, that's a big deal. It's a, it's a special day. It, it requires a celebration. You know, it it's an opportunity to teach uh, my daughter, nieces and nephews and others, you know, just about the history around that and why it's a special day and a celebration. But at the same time, it's a celebration. I also look at it as motivation. Um, you know, it's, it's motivation to where, you know, I say, hey, I, I need to get up, continue to get up, um, educate myself socially, mentally, financially. So, you know, an opportunity opportunities do arise, you're in position to seize that opportunity. And if they don't arise, you know, you have opportunity to create your own opportunity. So looking at it that way, I feel like not only is it a celebration, but it's a motivation. And that mindset you have to carry on to your children and others and so that they can take that with them. And, and, and have that energy to keep pushing forward. It doesn't end with the celebration. You know, it, it keeps going with the motivation. And with motivation, you have to move your feet. You gotta keep going forward and keep pushing to try to strive and thrive and do better and, and relate to everybody and be able to talk to everybody and communicate on a level. And that's, that's where things can come together, I guess is the best way to say. So for me, Juneteenth is a celebration, but it's also motivation. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. The platform is now open for anyone to share any feelings or thoughts that you may have around Juneteenth and its history. Anyone? Okay. Well, we will now hear from the chaplain of Trinity Oaks, Ms. Brenda Bynum. Hi, 
I'm Pastor Brenda Bynum. I'm the campus chaplain at Trinity Oak Salisbury. I wanted to share a little information with you today regarding Juneteenth, which is always on June the 19th. It's also considered as Emancipation or Freedom Day. Juneteenth is a holiday that commemorates the end of slavery in the United States. It recalls how the states of Louisiana and Texas heard the news that President Abraham Lincoln had signed the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863. Slavery continued in those two states for more than two years after the proclamation was signed because the word had yet to travel there. Texas and Louisiana finally got the good news on June 19, 1865. Former slaves broke out in spontaneous celebration. These were dangerous times. Even in the face of resistance and threat, the formerly enslaved Africans found ways to give voice to the wide range of thoughts and emotions at the announcement of the end of legalized slavery in the United States of America. I want to share a drawing with you, which is called a, a Sankofa. It's a metaphorical symbol used by people of Ghana generally depicted as a bird with its head turned backwards, taking an egg from its back. It expresses the importance of reaching back to knowledge gained in the past and bringing it into the present in order to make positive progress. It is a West African spiritual proverb and teaching that reminds us to go back and fetch it. That is, taking hold of our past, our history in such a way that it becomes nourishment and guidance for journeying into our future. Harriet Tubman said, always remember you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. Now I've been free. I know what a dreadful condition slavery is. I have seen hundreds of escaped slaves, but I never saw one who was willing to go back and be a slave. Frederick Douglass said, liberty is meaningless where the right to utter one's thoughts and opinions has ceased to exist. That of, of all rights is the dread of tyrants. It is the right which they first all, of all strike down. They know its power. Thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers founded in injustice and wrong are sure to trouble and make men tremble if men are allowed to reason. Equally clear is the right to hear. To suppress free speech is a double wrong. It violates the rights of the hearer as well as the speaker. Growing up in the South for me, primarily, our ancestors insisted that our families have a strong faith because trouble wouldn't last always, and that there will be a better day and a brighter future for us if we continue to trust God and have faith that equality and justice will someday prevail. It is still a work in progress, but we as a people have been known to have patience and perseverance to endure whatever would come our way, so to gain the freedoms that are our God-given rights. There's so much more that we as a people can do by being more progressive into the future together in order to continue our journey moving forward, but remember also to go back and fetch it. How do we celebrate Juneteenth? Wherever you are, if you'd like to honor the holiday, traditional foods served at this celebration are red and black. Red to acknowledge the bloodshed in the fight for freedom and black for the color of our skin. However, the official holiday colors are red, white, and blue to signify that the formerly enslaved were and still are Americans. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you created us in your image. Grant us grace to contend fearlessly against evil and to make no peace with oppression. Help us like those of generations before us who resisted the evil of slavery and human bondage in any form and any manner of oppression. Help us to use our freedoms to bring justice among people and nations everywhere to the glory of your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. I'd like to give you a charge or a sending. 
And now, go into the world in peace, have courage, hold on to what is good, return no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. We want to thank Chaplain Bynum for that powerful message. I will now turn it back over to you, Mr. Goins, to close out in your own way. All right, but you're going to have to start calling me Ted. I keep telling you that, but it's just Ted. Okay. Um, you know, as we were, I, this was just wonderful. I, I'm thrilled that this was a grassroots effort uh, to, to the whole team that was involved. I thank you all. And for all of you that were willing to give up a little bit of time this afternoon uh, for a, a, a very important program, especially in this day and time. Uh, while I was listening to Pastor Brenda, I, it reminded me of a, um, I'll, I'll share a, a final quote, uh, a Maya Angelou quote. And this was one that, that uh, I think applies to all of us and it applies to Lutheran services because we're growing and learning, you know, how many people on this call have said they really didn't know that much about Juneteenth. Um, along the way, but it says uh, that her quote um, was, do the best you can until you know better, then when you know better, do better. Well, we're all learning uh, together, and that's what Lutheran Services has been about for a long time. So we're all learning, uh, and now that we know better, we can do better. So let's go out and tell somebody today and tomorrow about Juneteenth that might not know and some people might not care, but let's tell them anyway, and uh, and and uh, and do our little part in our little corner of the world to uh, to to make our world a better place and uh, to serve our mission, and especially to serve our new value of justice for all people. So thank y'all very much, and have a good rest of the day, and happy Juneteenth. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron, Sarah, and everyone else. Yes. Thank you all. Great weekend. Great program. Thank you.